So I don't know what it is with manufacturers these days. They make everything out of plastic. And a lot of these plastic parts tend to break. And sometimes we can't find replacements for them. So today I decided, you know what would be a great way to fix this? A 3D printer. <laughs> yeah, let's spend thousands of dollars to fix $2 parts. Well, sometimes these cheap parts are just no longer available, so this is the only option that I have left. And I'm sure there's plenty of other uses we can use a 3D printer for. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna build our very first 3D printer. So building a 3D printer is a lot like building a car. It's a bunch of nuts and bolts, but it's a lot more delicate than building a car because it's way easier to break the parts that are on it. Now I ended up going with what's called a Prusa. These are supposedly really reliable printers. They're supposedly really user friendly. The only thing is they have their own set of issues when it comes to assembly. So when this belt's seated all the way to the side on this one, it's slightly taller than the one here. So no matter what I do, I can't get these things to be in a perfect straight line. So the belt's gonna travel slightly from left to right. So I had to actually flip this gear just to make it fit right. Um, and now that it's going, it's turning pretty good. It's moving kind of smooth. But yeah, it's kind of a pain to get this thing to line up right, but now we finally got it. Uh, so now we're gonna move on to the next axis. But aside from all the problems that this thing gave me when it came to assembly, I actually really enjoyed the process of just sitting down and putting something together. It's kind of funny because the instructions really reminded me of when I was a kid and I used to put Legos together. I used to save up all year just to buy like one giant set of Legos and then I would spend all day putting that thing together and then eventually it would just get thrown into a bin and never seen again. I miss those times. All right, so I ran into my first problem. This piece here, there's a hole. You can kind of see right there where the bearing goes. That's not meant to be there. So I contacted them. They were gonna send me a new part because it's under warranty, but they said I could use it and then I could just print a new piece if I wanted to. So yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do. But I will say that one of the best things about assembling a printer yourself is that you get very familiar with all the little pieces that are inside of the printer. So let's say if something breaks down the road, I'm gonna know exactly how to take it apart, what the part is and what it's called. Because prior to doing this, I had no idea what any of these things were. I mean, I knew what a stepper motor was, but I had no idea what an extruder was or a hot end or a cold end or like just all the different little pieces that go into this, like the bed and everything else. Like it's, it's a really complicated machine, but it's really simple if you just go step by step. But if you try to just think about the whole thing as a piece, like just from looking at it, if I had to do this thing without ever putting it together and then try to fix it, I would be completely lost. So I definitely think it's worth assembling your own printer because it definitely gives you a good idea of how everything works, how it's all assembled. And then if there's ever any maintenance issues, you kind of know how to do it. So I definitely think there's some positives to building your own. But there's also drawbacks because you have to do all the calibration yourself and if you do something wrong well now you got to fix it and i definitely had that problem because for some reason i kept having these weird errors pop up it was saying that there was something wrong with my x-axis so i couldn't figure out why i messed up but i had accidentally put the y into the x and the x into the y and that's why this test was failing. So it's really important to make sure these wires are correct. So those wires are kind of a pain in the neck, but I think I got them set up. So let's go ahead and run another test and fingers crossed this time it works. Try it again. All right, so it's running the test now. It's basically just trying to see if everything's working. That sounds crazy. That's kind of weird. So I like to think of this part as the printer just getting to know itself. It's basically trying to figure out where it is in space, I guess. At least that's the way I understood it when I was learning this thing. And this little piece of paper is just to kind of set the gap between the little IR sensor and the bed. So now I gotta adjust the height of this stuff. I have no idea what I'm looking at. So this should be interesting to see. Oh, look at that gross stuff just oozing out of there. Oh, <laughs> it's like a little turd. <laughs> So what we're doing here is just the first layer height adjustment and it's kind of a pain in the butt to do. Boy, that is hard to tell. I'm basically making small adjustments by eye and my vision is not the best right now. I think that's close. It's so hard to tell. But basically I just want the first layer to adhere very well. Okay, I can kind of see the distance, the difference. So after a few tweaks, I think I got it pretty close because it looks like it was sticking pretty decently. 
All right, time to put the memory card in and see if we can print something. So one of the first things I printed was a benchmark test. This thing's called a Benchy. It's basically a toy boat that puts our printer through its paces. It's trying to test different things like bridging, bed adhesion, layer adhesion, all these different things to try to see if there's any issues. This thing will really point it out before we start printing something really large. All right, let's see what this thing looks like. There it is. Wow. Well, it definitely printed really well. There's a little bit of strings it looks like in between this gap, but it's like super fine. Very hard to tell, but it looks really good. As far as the layers go, it looks pretty good. It's pretty solid. That's what's up. So one thing that I really wish Prusa would have done is explain that when you hit this enclosure that you have to disassemble your printer because I essentially had to redo things that I already did to build the printer into the enclosure. I just thought that you would take the printer, put it in the enclosure and close the door. Nope, it actually changes the way that it's built. You have to rewire things and move the power supply to the outside because it's not good to have it in there because it gets too hot. So yeah, there's a few little growing pains when it comes to it, but it's actually going to be a really good thing for us because it's going to enable us to eventually print on ABS and ASA, which is really good when it comes to car parts. The issue is I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do the ventilation system because they put off some really toxic fumes. But luckily this thing will help us maintain the heat inside the enclosure. And one of the first things I decided to print in the enclosure was actually handles for the side of the enclosure. It actually did a really good job making those parts. So now that the fun part of assembling the printer is done, it's time for me to go into the worst part of this entire process, and that's learning how to design things in CAD. Oh boy, this is gonna be fun. So the first thing on my list is to fix this little tailgate clip here. So I'm gonna take this off and go design a new piece. Boom. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece and I'm gonna basically take a whole bunch of measurements and try to figure out just how big this thing is. See if I can design this thing through some 3D design software that's pretty free to use. But uh, I'm kind of a noob at this stuff, so this should be fun. So I don't know what I meant when I said I was having fun because it's not exactly fun. It's more just like interesting. It's interesting the fact that I can take this piece and kind of copy it in a digital world and then eventually print it out into the real world. That part is pretty interesting. It's not exactly fun though, because I'm using this free software called Tinkercad. And in this software, it basically makes it to where you have to use pretty simple shapes and you either add or subtract. It's pretty much what I'm doing here is I'm taking little like triangles and squares and cylinders and just kind of trying to make the basic shape, but also trying to keep it exact in the measurements that I'm using. Now everything's done in millimeters and you have to make like very slight adjustments here and there and it's kind of complicated when it comes to getting the exact shape that you want. So you really have to think outside the box. So when you're thinking about your shapes, it's kind of like, oh, well, how do I take a square and turn it into this like star shape? Well, you'd have to like add pieces, subtract pieces until eventually you end up with something that looks somewhat like a star. Or in this case, similar to the part that we were replacing. Now you can see that it's a very complex shape, but it really is, if you break it down to the individual parts, very basic shapes. But now what I got to do is I got to take this piece and send it over to what's called a slicer. Now I'm using what's called Prusa slicer and it's essentially a 3D representation of our print bed. This is going to allow us to basically do things like add supports and decide exactly how each layer is going to look when we actually put this thing together. And it's going to give us a good indicator if there's any problems. And we can kind of check and see like are there any issues with the layers, how they're assembling and everything like that. Once we get those things set the way that we want them and we think it looks good, then we'll be able to take this and export it to an SD card and then start our print. So now one thing they don't tell you is how long it takes for things to print. Luckily this thing's really small so it should only be about 15 or 20 minutes. But if this thing was larger, it would take a lot longer. All right, well, that piece came out pretty clean. Uh, I would say that this is not an exact replication of this one because it's very close. I got the size pretty dang good, actually. 
all things considered. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to see because it's such a small part, but if you look there, you'll see that it's pretty dang close to what the original was. So we'll just have to go see if this thing actually fits in the car and whether or not it actually works. But yeah, this would be a pretty cool use for a 3D printer. Okay, so you can see there, I mean, it's pretty dang close in terms of size. I think I got it pretty dang good. Not bad for a noob. All right, let's see if we can get this thing to fit. So it should go in something like this. Slide that in there, and we should be able to click that on. Ah, it's so close. Okay, I'm gonna try to get rid of some of this rust. Let's see if we can get it now. On there, and will it pop into the hole? No, okay. Well, let's go back to the drawing board on that one. All right, let's try version 2.0. I made this thing a little bit thinner, but it looks like maybe a little bit too thin. Let's find out. If it fits in the hole, yeah, it fits in the hole, but it slides right out. Okay, so this is version number three. I basically thickened up this piece just a little bit, and I opened this up just a wee bit on the inside here, so we'll see if it fits. That popped right in, so that's pretty good. There we go. That popped in there. And, ooh, it's close. Oh, it's so close, I just need to push it through. Man, they don't design this for people with big hands. Oh. All right, let's go for V4. All right, so version, I'm not sure what this is, but I thinned this one out just a little bit. Let's see where we're at. There we go, that popped in. Come on, baby. Come on, you piece of shit. Get in there. Man, my hands don't fit in this fucking thing. Damn it. I'll have to do this in daylight. <sighs> All right, time for version 5.0. It's the next day. So the reason why version five is probably gonna be a little bit better is there's a little bit more flex and I think I'll be able to squeeze it in there. So let's see. Boom. Hey, we're in. Nice. Should be good. Hey. Nice. It works. So you can see it's fitting right in there, nice and tight. And this is what the old one looks like. There's the uh, 3D printed one. And, ah, cool. Sure ain't nothing better than spending hundreds of dollars to fix a $2 part. But hey, at least I can say I did it myself. Sweet. So here's another quick example. I got this key fob here that was missing a button. Well, I made a little button and now I'm gonna put it in there. So just put a little bit of super glue on the back just to make sure it doesn't fall off. And then we're gonna pop it in here. All right, got it in position. I'm gonna hold it upside down so that way the glue doesn't get into the actual button. So there you have it, two new buttons, feeling pretty good. They don't fall out and they both click. All right, let's see how they do. Nice, seems to work pretty good. So I got the printer going right now. I just got a new thing that I wanted to fix which is these little black pieces on the BMW. These things are always breaking. These little tabs always snap off. So I'm actually printing new tabs for it. I also had this piece from the BMW that always snaps off. Like it just sits up in the driver's seat. And right now it's just like these little bare clips because these little pieces under here. So these things are always breaking tabs. So literally I printed a new tab right here and I'm just gonna take it and epoxy it on there and I'm gonna put it on both sides and then, well, I'll have a little piece of my interior back on the BMW. So. These 3D printers are really useful for a lot of different things. All right, so I'm literally gonna take some of this uh, epoxy. And we're just gonna mix it up. And then literally, I'm gonna take it and apply it to the bottom of each of these. Just rough it up a little bit. There. Oh, and now we'll just hold that on there. Now I just gotta let these puppies cure and then we should be setting pretty good. All right, let's see how these things fit. Okay, so this is the little piece that I got that's gonna be like a little clip. So the idea is that we're gonna take this little clip and we're gonna epoxy it on here, and then we'll have a little clip back. So I just gotta go double check that it fits. Okay, so I got these pieces glued on here. It's looking pretty good. So I guess now we're just gonna see if we can get it to fit on there. Ah, well I broke that one. That's cool. Well, I don't know if they're, oh. Hey. All right, cool. It fits, nice. That only snaps off one of the arms, but hey, I'll take that as a win. That's holding it, nice. Okay, so I've given these things enough time to cure, so let's see if they hold up. 
All right, so first we're gonna put these clips in here just to make sure we got something to hold on to. Uh-oh, I think I broke that one. Well, that didn't work. They broke right off. That's unfortunate. Well, back to the drawing board on that one. All right, so this time I'm gonna put the clip on here and then try installing it. See if that helps. All right, here we go, let's see. There we go. There we go. Hey. All right. Look at that. It's in there. Sick. All right, cool. Fixed it. Wow. Feels really good to actually have my car back in one piece. Like, look at that. Got a nice little cover right there. Doesn't look like bare metal anymore. So the only other thing I gotta figure out is this dang sunroof. I don't know if there's like a plastic piece or something I'm missing up there, but looks pretty good. So yeah, 3D printing is pretty helpful when it comes to automotive stuff. Everything that I've printed so far has been done in PETG. Eventually I'm going to be doing ABS and ASA, but I don't have good ventilation for that yet. So that's going to be a future project. But anyway, I hope you guys are excited about this stuff. I'm going to be using this in upcoming videos when we work on different projects, including the Mustang. So stay tuned for that. I'm actually working on it like today. So we're going to have more Mustang content coming soon. Don't worry. But anyway, thanks again for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Beep.